so uh, hi, Matthew. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself real quick? Sure. Uh, I'm Matthew Shenton. I am a graduate student here at Washington State University under Dr. Leachman, hoping for a PhD in researching uh, heat transfer boiling correlations uh, for cryogenics. I grew up in southeastern Idaho, so I'm an Idaho boy, um, and uh, on, on a ranch, and so that, that's kind of really defined my lifestyle. Um, I'm very outdoorsy. I love like working with my hands, and mechanical engineering was kind of the track I decided to go on. Um, my, my situation has been a little different because I actually finished high school and did the majority of my schooling in Montana because we were right on the border. Um, and I got a degree, a bachelor's of science in mechanical engineering from Montana State University. And then I came to Jake for this wonderful opportunity. And, you know, th there's a little bit of pressure on, on myself because uh, when Jake and I had first discussed me coming aboard, he was like, yeah, you know, um, you're one of the first outside um, graduate prospects that I've really considered. And so when he brought me on board, I just felt like the, the self pressure to uh, do well and perform to give everyone the chance that I have. Very nice. Um, what originally intrigued you about hyper that wanted, that made you want to come to WSU? So kind of a funny story. I was intrigued by hyper because I thought it was something completely different. <laughs> um, when I, I was just researching graduate schools and like uh, professors and researchers kind of in the thermal fluid sciences, because that's kind of what I excelled at in my undergrad. And I came across uh, Jake's name and it said he had a lot to do with hydrogen, deuterium, and tritium. And uh, I took a lot of nuclear classes in my undergrad as well so that was originally what I thought he did was more of the nuclear side of things and so that's I shot him an email and then we had a major discussion of kind of actually what he did with with hydrogen and sustainable energy and um, it, it really excited me by the prospect of using uh, hydrogen specifically as a renewable resource to and integrate that into um major commercial operations and coming from my ranching background I could see how that could be extremely useful in the agricultural sector in farm equipment you know diesel trucks and all that stuff so that really kind of made me more excited to come or like to research with Jake. Absolutely so um what's your typical day at Hyper look like? Uh it's it's a little different now because we're all in COVID times and lucky me I got brought on right as COVID was in the middle of things so I've only ever been in the lab like maybe a week total um, mm -hmm. and that's counting my interview and visitation <laughs> when I when I came to WSU to see if I want if I wanted to join the team um, so I currently right now I'm just in the midst of my literature review kind of determining all of the correlations that have been done for heat trans boiling heat transfer um, and cryogenics so I'll you know I'm just working out of my house right now and I try and keep up with everyone as much as possible um, thankfully there have been lab members in a couple of my classes I took in the fall so that's allowed some connections to form but and the community meetings of course I join those as much as possible to stay engaged but right now it's just me and my laptop <laughs> Very nice. Um, so like you were saying, since you were brought on during COVID, is, has that changed your work process that you were intending um, to feel more at home at Hyper or do you still feel very connected? Uh, I, I would definitely say it changes uh, or changed. Um, I was really hoping, one of the aspects I really loved when uh, I visited was that, you know, everyone had their desks in the TFRB and, and like you, you could go manufacture some stuff. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, so I was really, I was really looking for that like close knit uh, group and just like being able to talk to everyone, be on campus, kind of be in the scheme of things, see everyone's different projects even, you know, and talking about them. So it's definitely been an adjustment and I kind of wish I have that, but I'm hoping, I'm looking forward to it once 
this is all over. <laughs> agreed, agreed. Um, what's your favorite part about being a part of a community such as Hyper? I just think the knowledge base. Like, everyone is so knowledgeable, and Jake knows how to hire great people. Um, and it's just, it's very interesting to see everyone's backgrounds and how they come together to create uh, a new, like a new idea or design for a really kind of pioneering research such as hydrogen right now. Absolutely. And do you feel that that knowledge base has helped you learn a lot from Hyper? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, I didn't know one speck of thing about hydrogen before coming to Hyper. And in just the last semester, I've learned so much from so many different people. It's, it's crazy. That's awesome. So through, you mentioned earlier about, um, you have a very uh, agricultural background just from where you grew up and, um, and your education through Montana and now coming to WSU. Uh, what are you hoping to achieve? Are you still, is that still your passion that you wanna uh, use Hyper as um, uh, a way to connect to the ag agricultural world or what are you trying to achieve through that? Yeah, I, it, you know, visions change and I, I, I'll be honest, I fully don't know mine right now, but I, I do hope that someday I can kind of incorporate a clean, sustainable energy into the agriculture, agricultural sector and hydrogen is the up and coming clean energy source and I'm excited to be able to do that and if I could do that in life, I will say that I have achieved some, a lifelong goal. That's great. Um, what, what motivates you to work hard? To work, sorry, say that again. What motivates you to work hard? <laughs> oh, um, fear of failure. No, uh, <laughs> uh, I, you know, it, it, it's been ingrained in me since I was a kid. Um, just like growing up on a ranch, you know, that there, I, I've been able to see some like, really long-term hard consequences of my actions. Uh, you know, uh, if the cows don't get watered or fed, or if I forget to fix a mechanical implement and it breaks and it costs us a lot of money, you know, I mean, it, 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 it's tough and you got, you got to make those decisions and follow sometimes. So I, I think that's, what's really motivated, motivated me to like really have a self inner drive to just do the best I can for myself and my team so that, we can all thrive together and work as a cohesive unit. Absolutely. So one of the things that we have in Hyper is uh, FAIL stands for first attempt in learning. Um, just like you were saying before, just feel of, fear of failure. Um, have you kind of experienced this in Hyper or any other part of your life? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, uh, for Hyper specifically, um, it's been kind of apparent in my, uh, grant writing this past semester. I've had to write a few grants, um, for funding and I've just come into it with no knowledge on how to write a good grant. And there's one, the NSF grant proposal, uh, I only had five days to complete because I was, you know, jumbling up a bunch of like different projects and stuff in school and. Um, I wrote my first draft driving in the car with my family coming back from a vacation somewhere <laughs> and uh, I sent it off to uh, Dr. Leachman and he comes he sends it back it's like okay this is a great start but start over and it was just like okay well let's get it done. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so um, in that way I mean you've mentioned this before and it's a little bit of a repeat question but just like you were saying with Jake kind of saying like start again keep moving forward um has hyper kind of molded you into being thinking more professionally or um becoming more of a professional in your work life yeah definitely um it's very interesting since I haven't been here uh for a long time and haven't been able to like interact with everyone kind of on the scale that I want to it's been more of like a self-learning type of uh performance I guess 
it's I, like the blog post that the core team does has been really beneficial. And Jake has always recommended me to read them um, like how to be a professional or how to write a good grant proposal and stuff and, and other blog posts such as that. And they've been extremely useful just for me, ben- for me personally, when I'm not be- able to interact face to face with people to like, still kind of be like, Oh, maybe I need to start thinking this way or next time I meet a professional like this to start acting accordingly, or et cetera. Absolutely. And I know you said that you haven't been in hyper very long and haven't really been able to work together in person, but um, do you have any funny experiences or favorite stories from being in hyper? Yeah, it's, <laughs> I, I worked with uh Jordan Raymond last semester uh, in, in a class and I've, I've realized that I have some very interesting quirks that a lot of people don't wouldn't like necessarily see for me just like working in the lab like I remember one day um, we were set to zoom for going over a homework assignment and like an hour before that I had to go um, dig out a trench from my dad in our creek and I got stuck in our creek so <laughs> I, I texted Jordan I was like hey I'm gonna be late to this meeting I'm stuck in a creek and she's just like what <laughs> is going <Yeah>. on <laughs> it was it was kind of funny that's good bonding that's yeah. how a team is created <laughs> exactly um and finally if you could give a piece of advice to a person to join hyper what it would it be? Hmm. Work hard and hyper will give you the tools to succeed. That is definitely what I have found in my first semester and, and a couple weeks is that Jake and others have pushed me really hard. But if you can if you can rise to the occasion and the challenge and get your work done and do good work it'll be smooth sailing. Like you'll have all the tools you can to succeed and, uh, and they hire great people and a diverse bunch of people. And you should be thankful that you're working with such a unique group. Well, I want to say thank you so much for having an interview with us and giving us your time. It was wonderful talking to you. It was wonderful talking to you guys.